What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Today is the Lazy Days channel. And we're back at it again with some more history reaction for you guys today. And we're on Epic History TV's content for you, the Napoleonic Wars. And we're doing Napoleon 1813, Battle of the Nations. We're really enjoying his content over here on this channel channel if you haven't already please head over to his page a link will be in the description box down below if you're enjoying our reaction then please like comment subscribe, subscribe hit that notification bell but we're just going to jump straight into this one let's do this between a battle lost and a battle won the distance is immense and there stand empires napoleon bonaparte october 1813 <laughs> It's getting exciting, man. It is getting exciting. Two episodes left. Oh, I can't believe October it. October 1813. Napoleon Bonaparte faced his greatest crisis since becoming Emperor of the French nine years before. His long war in Spain had ended it in looks defeat. Like he's about to pull out my and an Anglo Spanish Portuguese what? army. That man is not. That man. <laughs> that man there is not dropping you off with free fire. Jack. What are you talking about? <laughs> that, that man. Yeah, I'm right here, man. That man looks like he's still living with his mum <laughs> in the garage. <laughs> He's just got like a spelly ache. <laughs> and he just keeps his hand on his stomach just to rub it. <laughs> just to rub it all the time. Army no, he's playing with his own belly the Pyrenees <laughs> to invade France itself. <laughs> Do you reckon he had Germany, an Emmy or an Elty? The Kingdom of he had Bavaria an just had switched said. sides and joined the Sixth Coalition against France. <laughs> oh, we're so sorry, guys. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. We'll, 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 yeah. <laughs> The tism. The, the tism. Yeah, these are the questions you need to ask, man. Did Napoleon Bonaparte have an innie or an outie? <laughs> the important no. historic question, guys. Yeah, seriously, man, because it could pertain to a lot of things. You never know. You're being serious as well. I love it. You're being serious as well. I love it. I, love I you, don't Jay. know, man. I'd I like love to, you, Jack. I'd love to know if this guy had an in or an outie, man. I know you would. I know you would, Jack. If you guys know, let us know in the comments box down yeah, below. Yeah, please. This is going to help my tism out. Self. <laughs> oh. In Germany, the Kingdom of Bavaria had switched sides and joined the Sixth oh. Coalition against France. While in Saxony, Napoleon faced four armies converging on him from all directions. Oh. What's more, these were not the same bunglers he'd crushed in 1805 and 6 at Austerlitz and Jena. Mm. Prussia, Austria and Russia had all learned from their mistakes. They were now better organised, trained and led and more wary of Napoleon. Mate, the artwork is just so beautiful. It is. It really is. We need to invest in The somewhere. largest coalition like, if, force if we ever was get the Army of Bohemia, commanded by Austrian the only French Marshal, thing we own. the Prince of <laughs> Schwarzenberg. quality artwork. His was a huge, mixed Austrian-Russian-Russian okay. Russian army Ooh. of 194,000 men and 790 <sighs> guns. To the north, Blücher's <laughs> army of Silesia and the Army of the North, under Napoleon's ex-Marshal Bernadotte, now Crown Prince of Sweden. Together, 130,000 men and 536 guns. <laughs> to the southeast, General Bennigsen's Army of Poland, besieging Dresden. Mm. Another 34,000 men and 135 guns. In total, the coalition had fielded 360,000 men and 1,500 mm. guns, with Russia supplying the bulk of the troops. One unique addition to Bernadotte's Army of the North what? was a single troop of British rocket artillery, an experimental... I'm... Yeah. Rocket artillery? Yeah, they're experimenting. That's really interesting. I did not know we were doing rocket artillery in the 1800s, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit! Army of the North was a single troop of British rocket artillery, British. an experimental weapon system based on the Congreve rocket, a type seen here in 1830. Although wildly... Wait, what was that? So it was 
Oh, it was a scene in 1830. So, so this was the prototype to the rocket coming. A type a rocket. here in 1830. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one is a predecessor and the prototype to what was then seen in 1830. I'm assuming on a, a right. slightly larger scale. So I'd imagine we we probably only had one or two of these and we were testing them. But we Although, decided to think of a rocket launcher. <laughs> Like, you know. I love the well, mortars. You think we use mortars? This this would be the the, the starting yeah. of a mortar. Do you know what a mortar yeah, is? Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. You, you, and it goes, yeah, yeah. Um, That's, yeah. I was not expecting that though. No, so it's about to say. So. Although wildly inaccurate, their high explosive warhead could be devastating mm. at close range. Napoleon's forces around Leipzig were outnumbered almost two to one. But with 200,000 men and 700 guns, the Grande Armée was still a force to be reckoned with, and it's all one with many experienced unit. troops and commanders, mm. even though it increasingly relied on young conscripts to make up numbers. Oh, not in laser. There. Mm. there were another 140,000 men that Napoleon could not call on. Someone said in the comment box, like, a lot of the generals and a lot of the people who made it back from Russia had yeah. PTSD like, and still had shell shock and stuff like that. Even though, like, it wasn't as sort of intense yeah. as World War Two, they still come out with Oh, yeah, with no, of course, it's, it's war. Yeah, and also, like, like apparently, like, Marshal Lay, like, even though he made it back during that whole time, he was, like, looking for a way to die. Like when he was escaping Russia, that's why he was like doing so many crazy things. He was just wanting to either get out of there or get, die trying. Get out of there or die trying. Genius yeah, man. Basically. And like, I've, got, I've got a lot of respect for Marshal Ney for what he was able yeah. to do on that retreat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, same. General Rapp's tenth corps besieged oh, yeah. in Danzig. Marshal Saint-Cyr's first corps besieged in Dresden. Marshal Davout's thirteenth corps holding Hamburg as well as several smaller besieged garrisons across Germany and Poland. Napoleon was currently about 20 miles north of Leipzig with the bulk of his army. Marshal Murat was 40 miles to the south with 90,000 men, covering Schwarzenberg. Napoleon now decided to rapidly join Murat, and with their temporary superiority in numbers, defeat Schwarzenberg before Bernadotte and Blücher could intervene. Murat had orders to conduct a fighting withdrawal northwards. But at Liebert Volkwitz, he was drawn into major combat with the enemy's advance guard. Around 12,000 horsemen fought what some have described as the largest cavalry battle in Europe's history. Mm, wow. Murat, in the thick of it as usual, was very nearly captured by Prussian dragoons. The battle ended in a minor coalition victory, oh, with around wow. 2,000 casualties on each side. Wow. The next day, Napoleon <coughs> arrived just in the thick of it, to man. take command. Children, today is France's last day. Tonight we must have won, or all be dead. General Mason to the 16th Division, Leipzig, 16th of October. Wow. Yeah. Wow, well, indeed. Indeed? Indeed. 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 <laughs> <laughs> By the 16th of October, Napoleon had concentrated most of his forces south of Leipzig. Field Marshal Schwarzenberg, meanwhile, against Russian advice, had deployed his army on either side of the Pleiser River, which would hinder mm. his movements throughout the battle. Mm, yeah, that was an interesting... Napoleon decision. had entrusted the northern sector to Marshal Ney, with orders to keep an eye out for Blücher and Bernard. Do you see the size of this battlefield? Yeah. These are all little towns, he's like... This, this, this battlefield is massive. is massive. What is it? Can someone let, let us know what the actual, like... Um, area and battle radius was like in actual measurements like, yeah. I'd like to know because this seems like absolutely outrageous that, that's got to be like yeah. miles and Bernadotte yeah, and yeah, yeah. Miles. Yeah, yeah. but Napoleon didn't expect them for at least another day and so Ney had orders to transfer most of his troops south 
for the attack on Schwarzenberg. Mm-hmm. Schwarzenberg, however, knew that Blücher and Bernadotte were closer than Napoleon suspected, and that Bennigsen was also marching up from Dresden. This was the moment the coalition had been waiting for. <laughs> All their armies converging on Napoleon, with overwhelming superiority in numbers. However, cool. the coalition's yeah. headquarters were nothing like Napoleon's where one man's will decided all. Mm. Schwarzenberg had to attempt to coordinate the actions of three large armies from three separate states. And although he was commander-in-chief, his plans still needed to be approved by Emperor Alexander, the supreme commander, whilst he also managed relations with the King of Prussia and the Emperor of Austria, yes, a lot all of whom were present at his headquarters. That is. The plan finally agreed was for General Wittgenstein's corps group to lead an attack in four main columns, with two Austrian flanking attacks west of the Pleiser. Ooh. At 8 a.m. a bombardment began along the line, as Russian, Austrian and Prussian infantry regiments advanced across cold, muddy fields. Right, so this is all happening, and they've got cold, muddy fields to yeah. trench yeah, there as course, well. Of course, of course. I'm just really wondering how long Napoleon's going to be able to hold this for. Yeah, I, I want to see how. Yeah. I don't think he can hold the majority of it, but I think he can take out a large section. I think it's more about holding the ground at this point and trying to... I'm not too sure. Uh, let's, let's see how it yeah. plays out. Wachau soon fell to Russian infantry but French artillery fire made it impossible for them to advance further. Victor's second corps then counter-attacked, retaking the village at Bayonet Point. Bayonet Point. Oh, my... Wachau would change hands twice more that morning. These bloody contests ah. for small Saxon villages would come to typify the fighting around Leipzig. At Markleberg, Kleist's Prussian 2nd Corps drove out the Polish defenders after bitter fighting. While on mm. the left bank of the Pleiser, Bergelt's Austrian 2nd like well. Corps struggled across broken ground to attack well-defended villages. Their That's assault on Konowitz no. stalled, but with heavy losses the Austrians got a toehold in Derlitz. On the right flank, around 10 a.m., Klinau's 4th Corps occupied the high ground of the Kolmberg and fought its way into Liebert Volkwitz. Mm, that's close. Mm. Napoleon, observing from Gallows Hill, ordered up Augereau's 9th Corps and the Young Guard in support. Macdonald's 11th Corps was now also arriving in position on his left. His troops retook the Kolmberg okay. and counterattacked Liebert Wogwitz, driving out the Austrians and pursuing them over the fields beyond. Oh, he's pushing too far. It's the advance far. was only halted when Russian Cossacks were sighted on their open left mm. flank, a warning that Bennigsen's yeah, army was scary. not far off. Mm. The coalition offensive was <laughs> going nowhere, with most of its modest gains lost to French counterattacks, But there was one sector where the coalition had more success that morning. Okay. General Goulai's Austrian 3rd Corps, with orders to threaten Napoleon's line of retreat, mm. advanced over marshy ground towards Lindenau. Ney had to divert Bertrand's 4th Corps to reinforce the village yeah. and ensure the road to France was kept open. You've got to keep that one. Yeah, you've Napoleon got to. was waiting for Ney's reinforcements before launching his attack on Schwarzenberg. But now, 4th Corps was tied down at Lindenau. And there was more bad news from Ney. Blücher's army of Silesia was approaching from the northwest. Mm. Marmont's 6th Corps had had to turn about to keep the Prussians at bay. How Heavy long fighting can you hold it, broke Ney? out around Merkern. The village itself oh, held by that. elite French yeah, mate, Marines. Scary. 
while Dombrovsky's Polish division clung on to Vidrich. I probably would have pulled them back over from bridges. an entire yeah. Russian corps. Burn them. This was a nasty surprise for Napoleon, who thought Pilka was still a day's okay. march away. But the old Prussian general, hearing cannon fire to the south, had urged his men on and into the attack. Mm. Lucher intended to draw as many French troops onto himself as possible to assist Schwarzenberg's Army of Bohemia. His actions and the bloody fight for Mokern may just have saved the coalition from defeat. Wow. wow. That is crazy. That is. <coughs> now all hell was let loose. It seemed impossible that there could be any space between the bullets and the balls which rained onto us. Unknown Russian officer, Leipzig, 16th of October. God. That's crazy. That is crazy. Let all Napoleon let was outnumbered across the whole battlefield. But in the south, he still had a numerical advantage. Not as large as he'd hoped nor likely to last long. Schwarzenberg and Alexander were already moving up reserves, mm. though Schwarzenberg now found that his were on the wrong side of the Pleiser River, costing precious hours. It was now or never for Napoleon. At 2 p.m. he ordered the attack to begin. A grand battery of 180 guns blasted the enemy oh, lines. Yeah. Then Victor's 2nd Corps, Lauriston's 5th Corps, and the Young Guard began their advance. Mm, Napoleon's going for it. In support, Murat gathered two entire cavalry corps, 10,000 horsemen, and led them in one of the great mass cavalry charges of the Napoleonic Wars. Oh, Murat, go on. Cuirassiers of the 1st Heavy Cavalry Division broke through to the main enemy battery. Some even nearly reached the three coalition monarchs. Wow. Yeah. But the ground was marshy and broken by fences and ditches. The French mm. horses were soon exhausted and the squadrons disordered. Austrian cuirassiers and Russian guard cavalry were coming up from the south. When these fresh Allied cavalry reserves charged the French, a great melee ensued, but the French were eventually mm. driven back to their start line. Maison's division of the 5th Corps was involved in a desperate struggle for Golden Gossa. The fighting swept back and forth through the village, the streets filling with dead and wounded from both sides. But as Russian and Prussian guard regiments arrived to reinforce the village, the French were forced to fall back. Mm. Around 4pm, the Austrian Reserve Corps finally arrived and renewed the assault on Markleberg, one of the morning's objectives, which was finally secured. All of that, and he's been pushed back to where By 5pm, it was clear that Napoleon didn't have enough Let's reserves to force a decisive outcome in the south. To the north, Mercern was being stubbornly held by French marines mm. with lethal close-range artillery support. But despite terrible losses, York's Prussian corps continued to attack. Marshal Marmont himself was wounded twice, but remained in command. Finally, a brilliant charge by Prussian hussars triggered a French rout. Mercern fell as Marmont's corps streamed back towards Leipzig. As dusk fell around 6 pm, fighting died out across the battlefield. The first day of the battle had cost the French an estimated 25,000 casualties, the coalition at least 30,000. Napoleon had come close, but failed to land a decisive mm. blow. The chance for victory was slipping from his grasp.
Eighth Corps have lost a third of their men in many and many officers. All ammunition stocks have been used up. We have not enough to maintain combat for one hour. Marshal Polinsky, report at the end of day one. Wow. 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 God. I know. You've gone through all of that and you've got nothing to last an hour. Yeah. Oh, God. Sunday the 17th of October brought a lull, with both armies exhausted by the previous day's fighting. Napoleon needed to rest his troops and resupply them with ammunition, which was running dangerously low. He also sent a message to his father-in-law, Emperor Francis I, suggesting an armistice mm. and finally offering concessions. But the Allies were no longer interested. They knew time was on their side. The only major combat that day occurred in the north, where Blücher continued to attack. Russian infantry stormed Eutrich and Gorlis. Russian hussars charged and routed part of Arigi's 3rd Cavalry Corps. That day, Napoleon received 14,000 reinforcements okay. when Rainier's French Saxon 7th Corps arrived from I'd the northeast. Mm. But the same day, the coalition received more than 100,000 <laughs> reinforcements as their armies continued to converge on Leipzig. Col My confidence <laughs> is just gone. <laughs> Oh, oh, a few thousand. Oh, yeah, that, that'd be lovely. That would sort right out. What's that? A hundred thousand? <laughs> might as well have just got their big dongs out. And might as well have out. just waved it, mate. Oh, jeez, man. Just get out of there. <sighs> you've, you've had it, mate. You, you're imagine, done. imagine being in the coalition as well, seeing 14,000 men and just laughing at him. Yeah. <laughs> you think that's good? Yeah, yeah, yeah waiting out. <laughs> Aredo's oh. Austrian yeah. First Corps. Benigsen's Army of Poland and Bernadotte's Army of the North, though the oh, latter gap, was widely <laughs> criticised for his leisurely march to the battlefield. Leisurely march. <laughs> the next day, Napoleon would face odds of nearly two to one. It was time for the Emperor to begin planning his retreat. Yeah, you would have to at that point. Yeah. I write to you on the morning of a battle, the like of which has scarily been seen in the history of the world. We, are, uh, we have surrounded the French Emperor. This battle will decide the fate of Europe. General Ron Genstu... Oh, it's a letter to his wife, 18th of October. <sighs> on Monday morning, the sun shone across 40 square miles of battlefield, oh, on miles. which nearly half Jesus. a million troops and 2,000 cannon were assembled. Soldiers from France, Germany, Russia, Austria, Poland, Italy, Sweden, the Netherlands, and even Britain. This was truly Jesus. the Battle of the Nations. In preparation for his withdrawal, Napoleon pulled back his forces into a tighter defensive perimeter nice. and ordered Bertrand's 4th Corps to march west to secure the army's line of retreat. Two divisions of the Young Guard mm. under Marshal Mortier took their place at Lindenau. Schwarzenberg, meanwhile, planned to close the net on Napoleon with six converging attacks. So much. Fighting in the south began be around 8 a.m. On that time, the Austrians took Durlitz, but Marshal Udino led a counterattack at the head of a young guard division mm. and drove them out again. Counterattacks for the French were. Schwarzenberg was so alarmed by this reverse that he sent orders to recall Gulai's Third Corps. No. General Barclay's troops initially faced little opposition as they took Wachau and Liebert Volkwitz, scenes of such bitter fighting two days before, but now scarcely defended. Barclay then paused, waiting for Bennigsen to get into position on his right, 
before continuing his attack. Okay, smart move. Benningson's mm. troops had more ground to cover, but towards noon, they'd driven back Macdonald's infantry and taken their objectives. Mm. They would now wait for Bernadotte's army to link up on their right, but the Army of the North was again making slow progress, for which many again blamed its commander, hmm. who seemed exceedingly cautious about facing his old master in battle. Mm. Blücher, in contrast, Should did not hesitate to mm. launch <laughs> Russian infantry against Leipzig's northern defences, though their attack failed with heavy losses. Oh. You don't want Leipzig to fall. No, you don't. If all were demoralised and he appeared, his presence was like an electric shock. All shouted, Viva Emperor, and everyone charged blindly into the fire. Sergeant Major Jonan Rodrig, French something at <laughs> Leipzig. <laughs> I tried so hard on that one. Voltigio or something? By 2 p.m., yeah, Napoleon like was hard Prague, pressed on all fronts, <laughs> but holding his own. His attention was now focused on Probstheide, key no, no, to his southern front, back in 18, under attack from Kleist's the Russian thing, second I'm gonna lie. I know one guy's going to comment and be like, oh yeah, they didn't have any electricity. <laughs> I, thought, I was <laughs> like, there's a comments go! <laughs> 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 Dinner's French <laughs> troops had turned the village into a fortress and inflicted terrible losses on the advancing Prussians. Oh. Probstheide was soon engulfed in smoke and fire as fighting raged on all sides. Mm. Some Prussian regiments lost half their men attacking the village, while three French generals were killed as they mm. organised its defence. Oh. Napoleon He's even sent in Friant's division of the guard to reinforce so, yeah. the position. Oh, right. To the north, Bernadotte's army was finally joining the battle in earnest. Marmont had assembled 137 guns around Schoenefeld, which poured fire into the Russian ranks. In response, Bernadotte massed 200 guns of his own. The fields were soon strewn with the dead and wounded, as the sheer weight of fire mm. made it impossible for either side to advance. Around 3 p.m., von Bülow's Prussian Corps, supported by Austrian Jaegers and its small British rocket detachment, attacked Poundsdorf. Grenier's 7th Corps could not withstand the onslaught. It's just so insane how big of a... An hour later, it's around 3,000 Saxon soldiers rushed over to the enemy and surrendered. <laughs> the Saxons were deeply disillusioned with their French allies. Their main wish now was for a quick end to a war that had ravaged their homeland for many months. Oh, shit. Mm. The hole in the line created by the Saxons' defection was soon plugged by guard cavalry. But the coalition juggernaut could not be stopped. Towards dusk, under relentless Russian pressure, Marmont abandoned the burning ruins of Schoenefeld, while the Prussians took Sellerhausen. Oh, God, yeah. In the south, Probst Haider still held, but the situation was grim for Napoleon. Oh, the third day's fighting cost both sides another 25,000 casualties. Napoleon's army was exhausted, outnumbered, virtually encircled, and critically low on ammunition. Finally, the Emperor gave the order to Fine, retreat. <sighs> it took time, I think, in this situation. Yeah, but at the same time, I've got to give it to him. He did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sir. We will hold on. We are all ready to die for your majesty. Uh, Marshal Polinsky <laughs> to Napoleon on receiving orders uh, to form a renegade. That was an interesting one again. That uh, was. I don't yeah. know why. It's, it was like half French towards the end. Of yeah. I don't know why the start. I, I, I don't <laughs> <laughs> That's 
spring overnight, or under cover of darkness <laughs> and early morning oh, fog, the French oh, army yeah, was drawn behind Leipzig's walls. And at 4 a.m., began good. its retreat it west, crossing the single bridge over the Elster we, River. We at 4 that led back to yeah, France. Got There'd been General time Seaton. and materials to build extra bridges, but in what would oh, prove a serious well. oversight, no one had given the necessary orders. <laughs> there was no clear plan for Leipzig's defence, which was left to a jumble of understrength units, mostly Poles and Germans. Napoleon left Leipzig around 10 a.m. Behind him, there were scenes of mounting chaos and confusion. The city's streets jammed with troops, guns, and wagons. The 20,000 oh, wow. wounded troops in the city had little hope of escape. 30 minutes later, shells began to rain on the city as the coalition launched an all out assault oh, from north, God. east, and south. The rear I guard really held the city's cold. gates for as long as they could, but they were soon overwhelmed by the enemy and savage street fighting broke out across the city. A barge packed with gunpowder had been moored beneath the Elster Bridge so that it could be quickly destroyed after the rearguard crossed. Around 2 p.m. A corporal lit the fuse when he saw Russian soldiers on the far bank, even oh, though the bridge yeah. was still packed with troops, wagons and horses. Oh, fuck is it. The bridge was destroyed in a gigantic explosion that trapped 30,000 men and 30 generals on the wrong side of the river. Panic broke out among those who suddenly found themselves cut off. Most became prisoners, but some tried to swim for it, including the Polish Prince Poniatowski, made a marshal by Napoleon just three days before. Weak from his wounds, he rode his horse into the river, but as it tried to climb the steep far bank, it rolled over him, and he was drowned. Oh. Marshal Macdonald had also been cut off by the blast, and resolved to escape wow. or die trying. He found a place where engineers had cut down two trees as a makeshift bridge, and made his attempt. And there I was, one foot on either trunk and the abyss below me. A high wind was blowing. I was wearing a large cloak, and fearing that someone would grab at it, I got rid of it. I was already three quarters of the way across, when some men decided to follow me. Their unsteady feet caused the trunks to shake, and I fell into the water. Fortunately, mm. I could touch the bottom, but the bank was steep, the soil loose and slippery. Some of the enemy's skirmishers came up. They fired at me point blank and missed me, and some of our men, who happened to be nearby, drove them off and helped me out. I was wet from head to foot, breathless and sweating heavily from my efforts. Marshal Marmont, who had got across early in the day, gave me a horse. I wanted dry clothes more, but they were not to be had. Wow. The loss yeah. of the bridge wow. turned what was already a heavy defeat for Napoleon into a disastrous one. Who was this Later general? That day, this general needs the to be three executed. allied monarchs met in the centre of Leipzig he, to celebrate he, he's their just great victory. It. Yeah. What a prick. It had come at enormous cost. Exact numbers are impossible to establish, but in four days' fighting, the coalition armies suffered at so least 52,000 oh, casualties. Napoleon, who Honestly. could less afford such losses, came off worse. 47,000 killed and wounded, 35,000 taken prisoner, 325 guns lost. More men were killed and wounded at Leipzig than in any European battle before the First World War. Wow, Sir George fuck. Jackson, the British ambassador to Austria, rode over the battlefield with Metternich, the Austrian foreign minister, two days later. 
A more revolting and sickening spectacle I never beheld, he wrote. Scarcely could we move forward a step without passing over the dead body of some poor fellow, gashed with wounds and clotted with blood, another perhaps without an arm or a leg, here and there a headless trunk, or a head only, which caused our horses to stumble or start aside. It made one's blood run cold to glance upon the upturned faces of the dead. We got over this field of glory as quickly as we could. Jesus Christ. That's some scary stuff. That is some like, think about. yeah, that is some bone chilling shit. Yeah. All Europe was marching with us just a year ago. Today, all Europe is marching against us. Napoleon to the Senate of Paris, 14th of November, 1813. Let's jump on that before you did. <laughs> Napoleon had suffered a calamitous defeat. You knew the French accent was he coming. He had lost the battle for Germany. His domination of Europe appeared at an end. With 80,000 survivors, he began a fighting retreat to the French border. There was now no chance of rescue for the 100,000 men trapped in garrisons oh, across Germany and that. Poland, though some would hold out for another five months. <clears throat> Marshal Murat took his leave of the Emperor, assuring him of his loyalty, but secretly planning to cut a deal with the Allies to save his throne in Naples. It was the last time the two men saw each other. Wow. Eleven mm. days after the Battle of Leipzig, Napoleon's former allies, the Bavarians, tried to block his escape at Hanau with 40,000 men. The Bavarian commander, von Vreda, had served with Napoleon in many campaigns. But on seeing his deployment for battle, Napoleon remarked, I made him a count, but I couldn't make him a general. Mm. The French Emperor then ordered the Imperial Guard to lead an attack that forced the enemy to fall back in disarray. The French army reached the safety of Mainz three days later. Napoleon himself pushed on to Paris to contain the political damage from his defeat. Behind him, his empire was being dismantled. On the 4th of November, the coalition announced the dissolution of the Confederation of the Rhine, several of its former members now joining the war against France. Oh wow. In the Illyrian provinces, really local good. revolts, Austrian invasion and British naval support brought an end to French rule. In North Italy, Eugène was retreating steadily before the advance of von Hiller's Austrian army. While in Hamburg, Marshal Davu, with 34,000 troops, would soon be cut off and under siege. Napoleon's situation was desperate. But in the next campaign, fought for France itself, Napoleon would prove that he was still the master of war. I guess we'll find that out in the last episode. Mate. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus indeed. That was a good one. I'm interested to see what he does in the next episode. Yeah, he can't. There's, oh, mate. Yeah. Obviously, it is the ending episode, so. But he. I'm was, actually disappointed this is coming yeah, to Yeah, <laughs> you enjoyed it that much. Ah. <laughs> if you guys are enjoying our reaction, then please like, comment, subscribe, subscribe. hit that notification bell, and we will catch you in the next one. See you in a bit.